Good afternoon, everyone, um, and welcome to our special policy committee me, policy committee meeting um, for to give us an opportunity to talk about um, next year's school calendar um, and strictly for those sole purposes. I am going to start off today um, by introducing myself. I'm Rebecca Smondrowski, Board of Education member and chair of the policy committee meeting. Um, I'm here with my colleagues who serve on the policy committee. I'll allow them each to uh, introduce themselves and we will start with Dr. Daka, who's I want to celebrate and take a quick moment to say um, that today's her last committee meeting and we wanna thank her for all of her years of service and work that she's done, not just on this committee, but on so many over the years. So thank you, Dr. Daka, and you wanna say hello? If the guys can unmute you for you. For you. Okay. Hold on, Dr. Taka. Can you try and unmute yourself again? Okay. Well, we're having some technical difficulties, it looks like maybe, but um, are you able to do it? So I'll, I'll, I'll just, we'll go, we'll come back to you, Dr. Daka. Uh, Ms. Evans, you want to? Good something? afternoon, everyone. Shepard Evans. Uh, Mr. Kim? Good afternoon. And um, while we give Dr. Daka another minute, um, we are joined by um, several staff members um, as well. And um, I'm not sure, should I just go out ahead? And, okay, all right, well, Dr. Daka, yes. I know, I feel, try, see if you can unmute yourself. If you, if she touches the screen, it might. Oh, yeah, now you're unmuted. Nope, now you're muted again. Okay, well, we will allow um, the uh, staff from the superintendent's office to um, introduce themselves and uh, begin the meeting, and we'll come back to talk to Dr. when we get a chance. As I'm not sure who's starting this off. Uh, Ms. Would Mr. Hollis like to? Sure. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you all for, for being here today um, as we look over the revised proposals for the 2022-2023-24 um, calendar year. Um, and I will turn it over to Ms. Um, Edwards and let her uh, kick off the presentation. Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for having us today. Um, I am joined by Doug Hollis, who's executive director in the Office of District Operations, as well as staff from general counsel, as well as from the deputy's office. And today we are coming back, as you said, Ms. Mandrowski, this is a special policy management committee meeting. And we're really excited to be here and really take the opportunity to update the committee about our recent work regarding the school year calendar for 23-24. When we brought the uh, calendar to the board meeting on October 25th, we had a very robust discussion around several areas within our school year calendar that we're looking at and places in which we gained a lot of feedback to really be considerate of how do we build a calendar for our school system that really takes into account the instructional needs of our children, takes into account what we have learned from the anti-racist audit and creating that space for us to be able to bring a level of coherence and work very closely with different staff members around professional development, as well as the guidance under the blueprint. And so we, what we'd like to talk through you uh, with the team today Day around is just the work that we've done in the interim since we've last assessed the calendar in October and to help us prepare moving toward the December 6th board meeting where we will be bringing forward a recommendation that really um, condenses all of the feedback takes into consideration the needs of our district as well as the direction in which we need to go. And so we'd like to show the PowerPoint. We'll, we'll start immediately with slide two or maybe it might be three, sorry, that one, yes. Go back one more, thank you very much. 
So as I shared earlier, um, we've had a couple of opportunities to really engage around the school year calendar. We did have a policy management committee on the 20th. Um, we talked about it as a full board on the 25th. And when we left policy management on the 20th, the committee uh, really asked for us to bring four different scenarios forward. Um, and on the 25th, we really had a great discussion around those scenarios. And what you will hear between the 25th and today are really some, some prescribed actions that we took in order to make sure that one, we were continuing to engage with our community in an authentic and deep way while taking into account the things that we really wanted to focus on within this calendar. We will come back on December the 6th for that recommendation of the budget. I mean, I'm sorry, not the budget, of the calendar um, and be mindful of all the essential questions um, focused on the board's priorities. Next slide, please. So as we approach today, we will use the backdrop of policy IDA, um, using the policy management committee as our um, as a space for us to have these very intimate discussions that will provide us with a roadmap um, to be able to get ready for the December 6th meeting. As we did this work, it was very important for us to, uh, to really do some serious community engagement. And we will highlight um, some of the things that are different between the last time we were together Together today that has really provided us an extreme level of focus. Um, this calendar, of course, is built on really providing students the foundation and the time that they need for academic excellence, while still bearing in mind how we operate as a system. Our outcome is really focused on um, talking about all the implications, the scenarios with this committee, seeking your feedback, and coming up with the best solution for the superintendent to bring forward in terms of just what the recommended calendar will be. Next slide, please. So as we approached the work this year, we shared the last time we did it a little bit differently where we gathered interest initially. And so um, that, that really spoke to really being authentic in our approach for what we needed and wanted to hear from the community versus bringing scenarios forward first. We developed those scenarios and we are currently in phase three of still receiving feedback about those scenarios and really the different points within the calendar um, for us. Bullet three or a circle three has been very extensive for us. And as we walk through the data, we took two approaches. You'll see that we, we opened up a survey to our entire community and Mr. Hollis will share how we did that and how we really took the time to be thoughtful around who would engage in the survey. But we also know that the survey was not the only way to go. We had to take a lot of time to spend with individual groups of stakeholders to hear their perspective, to answer questions and gain feedback, to really be considerate of the best model to bring forward. Next slide. I'd like to thank this committee as well as the board for really highlighting that need again to have that authentic engagement. And so we really have taken time um, and we have spent about 15 hours, one hour a piece which each, with each of the stakeholder groups that you see on this page um, and talked to more than 1000 participants just around the different options for the school year calendar. I want to thank Mr. Hollis for his um, openness, um, op, um, investment in listening and investment in time. And every time we debrief something different that we heard with another group, we said, well, what about this group? How about if we do it this way? So this was almost an opportunity to, to leave no stakeholder unturned <laughs> at this point to really understand the interest and how to really build a calendar that speaks to where we need to move forward for Montgomery County Public Schools. In these stakeholder groups, we had the chance to really discuss some of the technical components of the calendar. And by that first day of school, last day of school, placement of professional development days, and those parts are important, but we also looked through that equity lens when we talked about things around the first day of school, 
extended breaks, and professional development needs of staff. And the continuous question we had to ask ourselves, not we're just not, does this first day of school work and does this last day of school work, why or why not? But in the context of who will this advantage um, and who might this disadvantage and those unintended consequences to give us the full perspective um, of each scenario, how it will play out for different stakeholders through the lens of students, staff, and families. So what you'll hear as I transition the presentation to Mr. Hollis are some of the themes that we were able to hear from our different stakeholder groups. In addition, Mr. Hollis will also share with you data from the survey and we'll be able to um, correlate those results to be able to share the right now understanding from our stakeholder groups in terms of the scenario that best meets where they are at this point. Mr. Hollis. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. Good afternoon again. Um, so here's where um, Ms. Edwards began to share a little bit about um, just how I will share a little bit around the stakeholder feedback. As, as she has noted, there are uh, two large components. There are sur there's survey data, and that is, um, it gives us a large sample of uh, quantitative information. And so we know when we took the survey out to interest groups, we had over uh, 19,000 people gave us some, some ideas of their interests and what they hope to see in the calendar. Um, in this case and now, uh, we've taken the survey out to some folks and um, 8,000 people had responded um, between November 3rd and November um, 17th of last week. And so in the first two weeks, um, and while we're pleased with that, um, I really like what Mrs. Edwards has already described and I would consider to be our road show. Um, this has been an opportunity to really go to a lot of targeted opportunities to see um, what individuals and stakeholders are seeing, seeing and believing about the survey, the different aspects of the survey. And so what you have here before you are some of the most salient points um, around earlier start um, and how it's connected in many ways to academic uh, success, but also maybe athletic success. Uh, you'll see the importance of professional development, um, what folks said about extended breaks, out of school time, and then the consistency of the calendar. Uh, so with regard to earlier starts, um, it's clear that many people are interested in us starting earlier. Uh, they know, um, they see the academic benefit, athletic benefit to it. Um, and so it's something that we're looking at. We know that scenarios, um, all these scenarios show something earlier except for uh, the last one, scenario D, which is August 28th. And we'll look at survey data in a moment to talk more about why August the 28th in some ways still rose to the top, even though people are interested, um, it seems like, in an earlier start. Um, and so these are some of those aspects there. Um, there's some other points here around the importance of professional development. Um, really the idea of balanced approach between we need, know our students need more. Um, and so when our teachers and staff are not teaching um, and holding traditional school in that moment, students aren't necessarily receiving the instruction. But overall, if those opportunities are used to increase our, our ability as a staff, then ultimately our students do benefit. And so just finding the balance between those things will be critically important as we come up with the recommendation um, from the superintendent's office. Uh, the other piece is, as we've discussed, particularly around the anti-racist audit, um, there are some PDs uh, that may need to be opportunities for all staff. And that just became a, a point that uh, was, was highlighted several times in a lot of conversations. Um, extended breaks, um, I think people look at wellness, they look at the opportunity for folks to recharge. Um, and at the same time, um, I heard in a lot of the targeted communities um, and, and in particular from various backgrounds, folks just noting that particularly with what we are experiencing as a, a, a community in terms of the economy, um, everyone does not have the opportunity to really um, take advantage of more breaks. Um, people have limited number of uh, vacation time, limited resources in terms of finding additional things to do when their students are away from the school building. 
Um, and so it's just something that we have to really think about when we think about extended breaks. And I think this bared out in some of the conversations we had. Um, and out of school time has become something that is a, a greater conversation. We do hope when we present um, in December, a final draft that we will have um, our folks from the chief academic office um, and the deputy superintendent's office to also be able to share around how we are growing um, our out of school time offerings, because it is something that families say, if, if that is available at my school site, um, then it's, it doesn't disrupt me as much and I can handle it. Um, so they're interested in that when we have these early release days and professional development days. And then finally, just the consistency of the calendar. Uh, folks just want to see um, the opportunity to have a calendar that's predictable, uh, something that actually has students and teachers able to get in a rhythm um, over a course of a number of days. When many people look at our calendars, they look at all the other colors. And I would say that white is an important color as well. Uh, the white uh, and consecutive, consecutive days of white on the calendar scenarios that we've placed um, really show when students are having continuous days and weeks of school back to back. And so those things are critical for us. And that's some of the major points that have come up in our targeted engagement um, in these opportunities with stakeholders. Next slide, please. Here um, is what we have traditionally always looked at, and this really speaks to um, some of the survey data that's come directly back from our survey. Uh, we put a survey out to the community. Uh, we've pushed it out several times now um, in our Thursday messages on social media. Um, I think we've also emailed directly to um, students. Um, and so that's hit some of their email inboxes. Um, we also have some upcoming communal events and student group events where we've made a flyer with QR codes and made it available for people to easily scan. Today, as, as families are entering schools um, for parent-teacher conferences, the second half of the day is a day where they should see flyers in their school building up and it makes the survey more accessible to them. So we'll continue to take survey feedback through uh, November 30th um, as we get ready to make that final recommendation. Here, I'll just highlight that we still are hearing mostly from parents and guardians. We also are hearing mostly from um, populations who identify themselves as white. And so that is why it's been so critical for us to have targeted engagement um, with a lot of different uh, groups from various ethnic backgrounds um, and even religious beliefs, uh, just to make sure that we're hearing from the breadth of diversity that Montgomery County Public Schools and Montgomery County as a whole offers. Um, additionally, you will see um, that there was some feedback given here around which scenarios and what rose to the top were scenarios D and scenario B. I think as important as you see uh, folks selecting scenario D and scenario B, and we'll talk about some of the details of those scenarios in a moment, um, is the reason why. And so question five, which speaks to 53% of the folks chose what they chose in terms of their top choice of a scenario is due to the first and last day of school. Um, There's some folks that seem to be um, chose or made a decision based on the extended Thanksgiving or winter break, but really the majority, overwhelming majority chose uh, decisions and scenarios based on the first and last day of schools. And then finally, the last two questions are not um, directly calendar questions, but they um, are impactful around this work and, and the greater work of our school system around virtual days um, and folks thinking that we should be considering uh, virtual days on a limited basis, case to case, as well as the idea of participating in out of school enrichment and care opportunities um, as we just shared. And so you'll see there that uh, there are a good number of folks who might or probably would participate. So I would say over 50% of our folks who have responded, almost 60% combined, uh, said they either might or probably um, would not participate in some ways. But I do think this is something that we continue to hear in our small group um, settings, that we know that it's important uh, that these opportunities are available to families to create a, a more consistent and less, dis and, 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 and less disruptive calendar overall. Next slide. So this survey um, and this slide is, is critically important to us. Uh, I just wanna orient you to it very quickly. 
um, you will see a summary of what scenario A has on it, what scenario B has on it, scenario C and D. Um, additionally, you will see in Navy um, large percentage signs, and that just correlates to the survey data that we just showed you on the previous slide. And that shows of those 7,400, almost 7,500 folks who were surveyed so far, um, who selected what percentage of which scenario. And so you'll see D um, as the one up out in front, um, but you see there's some interest in scenario B um, as well. Additionally, you will see um, some other pluses um, underneath the percentages. Uh, those pluses indicate when we had these small group meetings um, where the interest was. And so when we had the small group meeting, there was a greater interest around scenario D and scenario C. Um, if I could just say them quickly, scenario C and D uh, both have um, regular Thanksgiving and winter breaks. Um, scenario C of the two um, starts um, a little earlier and scenario D um, starts um, at the time that we regularly start school district, okay? Um, scenario B, which also had some, some favor in the small groups, not as much as the other two, C and D, uh, starts a week earlier. And if we just remember that point I made earlier around uh, a lot of folks chose what they chose um, due to when school year started and ended, um, I would just note that scenario B and a lot of students really circled this and pointed this out to me in a student group recently. Um, scenario B ends on Friday, June 7th. So it ends earlier than any of the other scenarios. So that's something of interest. Um, we've also heard from some communities, even though um, there are some other logistical questions around it, the idea of um, we're ready to start school. Um, and so when you, you're ready to start, and if you start a little earlier, that's something that we can deal with. Um, and that's why we've kind of pointed out that maybe the, the Wednesday, August the 23rd, or the Monday, August the 28th makes the most sense right now. But as we look long-term, um, and as some of the interests of this committee has been, as we continue to think about other innovations and ways that we um, better orient our calendar for the greatest academic success and athletic success, um, there's an opportunity possibly to shift the calendar a little earlier. So these are the biggest pieces that I really wanted to just um, show with, show, share with you all and make sure that um, we are kind of in sync with. Um, our next slide um, really leads us to a point of discussion. I know uh, Mrs. Edwards and I have shared a, a good amount of information thus far and wanted to just see if there's discussion at this point uh, between um, you know, school staff as well as um, members of the policy management committee uh, before we look even deeper into our trends and other considerations. So um, thank you, Mr. Ellis, I appreciate that. I was going to ask you though, do you think um, you wanna do the trends and considerations quickly beforehand because you've already started speaking to, to many of them, so. Okay, yeah, and, and they really just them. highlight. Yeah. Yeah, so if you all could put up the slide deck and we'll go to the next slide and, and we'll go through the last two slides and then we'll just have a moment of conversation and, and hopefully yeah. a work session so we can really come to something that makes sense for us all. These last two slides are just the overall trends and considerations. Um, we, we began to speak about them a little bit. Um, the earlier start to the year, um, what we started to hear mostly was August 23rd and August 28th are both real interests. We've heard that. August 21st seemed to be of interest as well. The, the challenge with August 21st is just the impact of summer school commitments, um, staffing. We know that we need a lot of staff and, and it's just um, something that we wanna make sure as a school district, we've given all the time and opportunity uh, for folks to select the best school district for them to work in. And, and so we wanna make sure we do that, but also the preparation of schools. Um, our school buildings, our staff, everyone needs to breathe. Um, just a little bit um, before we start the new school year. And sometimes with the summer programs, um, August 21st feels really tight and may be challenging for us. Um, as we think about August 23rd as an, as an opportunity and potential, um, one of the things we would have to work through is what do some of the other opportunities that folks often look forward to, those orientation days um, and, and days such as that, uh, that we're, we're familiar with for 
um, sixth graders and ninth graders and, and families new to a school building and new to a school community, even at the elementary level, particularly for our youngest students. So those are the pieces around the earlier start and what that may mean. Uh, with regard to professional development, um, I think the community um, understands what has what has um, been highlighted by by our school board as well as um, our superintendent and the staff around the need for professional development. Um, I just think the word that I keep hearing from folks is balance. Um, distribute these as best you can in a balanced way that it doesn't interrupt the flow of instruction for students or staff, but also uh, that is considerate around what it means for our staff um, and the way that they receive pay and other things related to when there's days off and some of them don't work and what that means for them um, and their opportunities as a staff member. The other thing is um, there are some pieces as we talk about the anti-racist audit, um, it may just be something we need to consider and say, doesn't the best Montgomery County public school system need to have make sure everyone understands the components around the anti-racist audit? And if we move forward with a, with a, a, a training and development opportunity, um, isn't it important for all staff? And so that's just something else that I've heard quite a bit in conversations around professional development. Mm -hmm. Next slide. And so this is the last one, just really one around breaks. You'll see uh, the statement here around uh, folks just don't necessarily benefit from it because of due, due to a lack of resources or time off um, and people just concerned around the continuous instructional days. So in some ways, this connects to professional development. Just need to be think, thoughtful about it. Make sure that we have aligned all the things as best we can um, for all of our staff as well as our students. And then lastly, out of, out of school time, um, this is something that we know our chief academic office is currently working on, but it's just how do we make sure that we have rich and varied opportunities um, and the idea of early, early release days and professional development days feel less disruptive um, and students can still access um, and continue their enrichment at their school site. So families um, don't feel the impact as much. So those are the really large trends and considerations. And now I think we are ready for discussion. So um, we can uh, stop the slides show at that moment and, and we can discuss. Great. So um, thank you again, as I've said before, and I will continue to say over and over again for all your work on this. Um, I know how hard you've worked to make sure that you've heard from um, you know, as broad a representation as possible. Um, and I know you have spent a tremendous amount of time in putting together different scenarios to try and come up with some things that really work. Before I open it up to my colleagues, a um, couple of little questions that I have. Um, so in just looking at scenarios D and B, B and D um, based on overall feedback, um, In, I, I do like the way um, in you know, some of these scenarios you were able to come up with some extended amounts of time um, that are uninterrupted. So like in March, for example, and um, beginning of December even, um, it looks like there's potential in scenario B to have a similar scenario in November, uh, end of October, beginning of November. Um, if we move something, but um, you were talking about the professional development days. First of all, I, I want to state that I completely agree that I think that, especially after uh, having seen the results of the anti-racist audit and all of that, that the professional development days should be something that we need as a system to commit to figuring out how to provide for all of our staff. Um, so one of the questions that I had was, um, you know, what, what, what is the cost for each professional development day to the system if we were to change it from just teachers um, or just, you know, those who are originally, initially um, signed that versus if we did all employees? 
Ms. Vondrowski, um, when we took a look at the, the cost and what you're speaking of is for our 10-month employees mm -hmm. uh, to be able to bring them in, it was about $8 million that we looked at per professional development day. Um, one of the things that Mr. Hollis highlighted was um, when we think about professional development days, there's also an opportunity for out-of-school time, which also creates an opportunity for additional staff to either work and or do PD. So there's still a component there where there, there creates an opportunity for pay. Okay, well, I appreciate that because I wasn't just talking about 10 month employees, I'm talking about bus drivers, part-time employees, anybody that you know is generally feels that their paychecks are affected by our professional development days. Um, and the fact that it's so, it is important to us as a system to make sure everybody understands you know, the, the value of cultural proficiency and um, how we, you know, work with our students and our families. Um, and I, I can speak to that um, briefly if you'd like. Yeah. So the $8 million would be to add a professional development day for all of our 10 month staff, our folks who, you know, normally might be off on, on a given day to basically add a day to the, to the contracts. Um, if we were to just look at including some of our operational 10-month uh, folks like the bus drivers and like the operational staff that you're speaking of um, to an existing PD day where our teachers are already working, but maybe the bus drivers are not because the students are not in school, the cost of that is somewhere between about $1.3 and $1.5 million per day. Okay, that that I appreciate that because that's where I'm hoping that as a system we can kind of make a commitment to try and be able to make that investment in, in all of our staff if possible. Um, and to that point then, in looking at scenarios, both B and D, one of my questions in terms of, well, so first I'll start off by saying, I in scenario D, you know, I think there, there are six professional development days that seems like a lot during the year, um, especially with five early release days. But that said, the, I'm concerned with the September um, 18th on scenario B, I'll just use that as, well, actually, let's look at scenario D since it came in as number one, but there's a professional development day currently listed on the 13th of September. Um, there's um, the 25th of September has no school. Um, the October 2nd, October 9th, my question kind of falls into, and even some of these others, have you looked at all at um, what pay periods? You know, I don't want to have too many of the those days affecting any one pay period, but I don't actually know what the pay periods are. I just know that it, has, it is concerning to employees who end up, you know, having um, their paychecks affected by by this. So I, I do think, um, Ms. Smondrowski, and I appreciate the point. Um, in some of the scenarios, we're just trying to show a number of days. I think I heard two things from you. One, six seems, seems like a lot. So if, if there was a decision and, and our final recommendation may not have six, but the other piece is, um, I think that is that additional fine tuning for us mm -hmm. um, to make sure um, that we're not impacting 10 day pay periods um, with two and three days off um, to, to impact staff in that way. And then I think the last piece I would add to that um, as we make those modifications is, is just really our intentionality around what Mrs. Edwards said. Um, if there's an opportunity, even on some of those professional development days that staff would be paid um, because they are actually um, doing some out of school time work, or it is one of those days that you've noted important uh, to the school district around mandatory um, professional development and everyone um, would actually be working. And so uh, all those things are important, but I also think it, it would also be important in terms of what that feels like for families. And so I would just say you are right to point out um, September 13th through October 9th. Um, and I think we can think about how we adjust and spread um, what happens over the course of a number of those different days a little differently. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, the other question I had was just for in terms of keeping um, 
addressing the um, consistency in weeks at a time. The no, on scenario B, the November 9th and 10th early release days for conferences, is that something that could or should be considered a um, move to the 16th and 17th if we were to, if this was one of the calendars to move forward? And I'm asking genuinely because I don't know. Is there yeah. a benefit to to me? The benefit to moving it is really just the it it gives another almost it's basically um, almost three week span of continuous school. Yeah, yeah. I would. Um, so I, I'll say what you see on the ninth and tenth of November. Um, is something that just follows an old model that we've done. When we did not do um, student conferences during the Thanksgiving week, right. we did mm -hmm. it close to Veterans Day. Um, oh, that's true. I think from the other feedback that we've heard, though, there's not a great interest in some of the extended breaks. And so if there's not an extended break, if we use scenario B as a base model, um, the 9th and 10th would not be early release dates, but they actually would go to the week of Thanksgiving and be that Monday and Tuesday, just like we're experiencing today. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to let my colleagues jump in, but um, I do have some thoughts and suggestions on um, some adjustments that we could make. Um, if we wanted to start with scenario D as sort of our, our baseline and um, make some adjustments from there. Um, but we'll, I'll do that after I hear from my colleagues. Um, did just want to mention though, that as we, um, just for you to keep in your mind, we move for December, for December 6th, that meeting, I'd like to see if it would be possible to get a draft of what a companion 2425 calendar um, would or could look like, um, and um, like us to be able to kind of look at what we end up coming up with through this meeting today, um, if what could be taken into consideration moving forward um, so that we could look at some more of the innovative type of things that we've talked about. So um, let's start with Dr. Daka, if you're seeing if we can get you on. So you're still muted. We've got to see if either. So if you touch your screen, it should come up. No. There, Excellent. try to do the ask to unmute. There you go. Oh, she had it for a second. Wait, do it again. You touch it again. You had it for a minute. Just you have to click that. She's uh, All right. Uh, when we talk about D, is the one that looks. D looks like the one that more people were concerned with. And I appreciate the fact that it'll be from 1.3 to 1.5 million for all staff to receive funding if those days are taken um, uh, as professional days. Opportunities outside has to be grown. And I think people have to get used to that idea. So if we did have professional days when the community was going to provide some programs for our kids, that would be good. I like the 1.3, 1.5 million because the, uh, Professional service employees are often cut out of the training, particularly for para education, educational people who work in the classrooms with, with teachers, but don't get the teacher training because they have to do it on their own time. Mm -hmm. um, the two days that we were looking at uh, in an earlier calendar, Thursday and Friday, it causes a hardship for childcare because a lot of people have to pay for a full week whether their kids are there or not. And that's one of the, that's when they start really early. Um, in calendar D, they have fewer days when paraprofessionals and service professionals are not paid. So 
we need to look at it and look at that. Uh, the fact that we um, would vary the times that our power professionals and our service professionals would not be paid doesn't erase the whole thing that by the end of the year, they will have lost a certain amount of money. Maybe not in the same week or the next two weeks, but they are losing funds on that. Um, we wouldn't have enough leaves, leave time for weather contingencies if we didn't do the old fashioned calendar. And that's my take on it. And we do need to have time between summer school and the regular school year, but starting even two days early takes time away from people to reorganize for the new year. And we need more time for people to prepare, prepare the buildings, the professional staff. Uh, with the service person. So those, those are my concerns with the whole uh, calendar issue. Mr. Kim? Yeah, um, so my understanding is that the survey will continue to, to gather information yes. from the community. Perfect. Um, so, you know, in my own experience, as I've kind of taken a look at the survey and gotten um, a chance to scroll through it, um, I do have a concern that that um, it's maybe a little inaccessible, or I'm just wondering how feasible or possible it might be, might be to change the survey to be a little more intuitive. Um, I certainly think that, um, you know, especially with the communities that we're trying to target, given the information we have about what communities have been engaged thus far, um, I, I think that making that survey more intuitive and accessible might help us in achieving that goal. Um, as it stands, I think it's just a little uh, more complicated to get through than it has to be. Yeah, it should be, uh, click one link and it takes you right to it. Um, so hopefully, so I appreciate that. Um, Ms. Evans, you wanna? So my colleagues have said most of what I was thinking, uh, particularly in regards to um, allowing all of our staff to be able to have the opportunity to take part in professional development um, with the recent information that we did receive from the anti-racist audit. So I am open to hear um, what more Mrs. Madras can want to focus on. Yeah, I have yeah. some smooth thoughts um, that I'd kind of like to get some of your I also appreciated you sharing the um, information, the benchmarking information from other neighboring schools, by the way, in, with our information. Um, so my my question um, to, to you, um, Mr. Hollis, as well as to my colleagues, um, my two things most mainly were looking at um, Number one, because there does seem to be a significant number, amount of interest in starting a little earlier, at least. I also, I do understand the concerns between with a half a week type of thing, but I think it might be a place to start. So um, at least we could then you know, get a better gauge of what people's thoughts are on when it starts. I did want to mention um, and introduce uh, Mr. Sullivan, who um, is also in this meeting with us. He is the head of our um, athletics. Um, I know that a lot of, I've heard from many parents who had concerns about how us starting any earlier um, may affect athletics. And I just wanted to see if you wanted an opportunity to comment on that. Thank you, Mrs. Oh, excuse me, one second. I was just gonna also mention for anybody who can, if they're not speaking to mute themselves, but I think it's maybe just Dr. Daka and we're gonna leave that be so you can stay on. Go ahead, Mr. Coleman, sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Mondrowski and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, in terms of the earlier start, um, we prefer an earlier start for athletics uh, twofold, one for our staff, it further aligns the start of sports, which is a fixed date by the, the State Athletic Association with the start of school. So right now, our staff that coach fall sports have to come back two weeks earlier uh, because of the start of fall sports. So there's that two week gap uh, from a staff perspective. The other perspective, and this was highlighted at the meeting, uh, Mr. Hollis came and met with our student athlete leadership council this past Friday. Great meeting, great discussion on the calendar. 
comes from the student's perspective and access to fall sports. In many cases, some students don't know about fall sports. It's already started. It's already two weeks underway. And then they're showing up and getting that information a little bit later. Uh, so from an access point, which is one of our core values in MCPS athletics, um, it would further align the start of sports with the start of the school year. So uh, we would prefer that. Great. Okay, that's good to know, because like I said, a lot of people have expressed concern about that. So one of the changes that if we were to start with the scenario D as a, a proposal for a calendar, one of the um, things I would like to propose would, um, with my colleagues approval would be that we would move the start date to um, August 23rd, the Wednesday um, start date, and um, be able to move the last day of school to um, June 14th instead of um, the 18th. Um, and then kind of just looking at, again, how we would align professional development days um, with those earlier days um, being included. I don't know like completely what that affects in terms of um, having them, not having them. Um, I'm open to your thoughts, Mr. Hollis. No, I, I think, um, so I hear the interest around June 14th and, and feel as if uh, depending on our start date and all the other pieces, um, I think we can make a commitment to do all we can to not um, go beyond June 14th. And I think that that's a possibility just looking at some of the other things that you've suggested. Um, and so I, I do think that's a real possibility. Uh, the August 23rd, I, I think that is inching us closer to starting earlier. And, and I would say that there was some feedback that said that they were fine with starting earlier. Um, I do think there's some logistical pieces that we would have to work with the deputy superintendent's office um, around what normally happens at schools um, during um, pre-service and right before school starts um, that we would just need to figure out logistically as a school district to make sure um, opportunities for preparation as well as orientation and those things could happen. And so um, I, will, I, I think I, we can explore as a team um, and a staff um, both of those things you just suggested. Okay. And I do think, um, I'm not sure why in scenario D, the 21st was marked as a non-professional development, or um, uh, August 21st. Normally the, yeah. first, the full week, um, or, so I was just curious as to why that day wasn't shaded. Yeah, um, I think as um, Mrs. Edwards and Mr. Hall shared around just the additional cost for professional development days, oh. one of the thoughts had been around if you reduce the number of pre-service days and just move a PD day into the school year. Um, but once again, um, all of the scenarios did not show four days. Some of them show five. Um, is your interest to make sure that we have five to begin the year? I, I just, I think that staff um, really value that time to have to not just do professional development, but establish, you know, setting up their rooms and um, preparing for, you know, students to come back to school. So unless there was a specific, like if it was a money-saving necessity, then I would say that, but if we could move... Yeah, I, mean, I feel like it'd be better to have one less professional development day during the regular school year and added it to the pre-service days instead. And Ms. Mandrowski, when you see the, the four pre-service days, we were, as we looked at all the different scenarios, we were trying to look at what was currently in the calendar that mm -hmm. we could possibly use for a professional day later um, that maybe did not speak to the addition of um, a couple of million dollars. And so that's why we looked at and got feedback around moving that professional development day a little bit later, but understanding the implications because we've been used to five days. Um, one of the days is an orientation day, but if we did it, would it be more acceptable to maybe have a professional development day earlier in the year? Um, so then it's almost kind of buying it back, you know, and putting it a little bit earlier. So missing that one day 
could be recouped, you know, pretty much within the first or second week of school. So when I say we looked at every single possibility in an effort to really be considerate around our desire to increase those holistic professional development needs across the district, but bearing in mind some of the, the implications that it has on certain staff, um, we were very thoughtful around that. Okay. Um, and I, I very much appreciate that. I'm not 100% sure I completely understood what you were saying, but um, I just, in, want, in an effort to want to ensure as much professional development time as possible, but also have as minimal of an impact on our families as possible with them. That's why I thought the pre-service day might be a better location for one of these professional development days if possible. Um, Oh, Dr. Daka, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Go ahead. Is anybody going to let me in? Can you hear me? You're in. Well, you're in. We, we can hear you. Oh, okay. And see you. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Now you're frozen. Oh, hold on. You're, you're on mute, mute now. You're mute. You kind of froze, so you have to push your button again, I think. Not, not that person. Yeah. Unmute. Okay. Yeah. Um, unmuted again. It just yeah. suddenly it goes off. Okay. The five days are really not five days because they have the leadership team meeting with um, with staff. They have. Uh, meetings with the departments and not necessarily in the building. They have the orientation day. So that really leaves like two days for teachers to actually work in their classrooms. So any cuts to those, you have to realize that it's going to be difficult for, um, for the teachers. And I'm still concerned about the two days that are Thursday and Friday. I don't know whether you uh, understood my anguish over that because people have to have childcare and childcare is usually by the week. So the people that we know that are most uh, affected by some of these days uh, would have a real hardship with that. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that is something we could consider. I, I mean, I'd also be open to doing a D calendar, but starting on the 21st, if that's something my colleagues felt better about. No, I, I don't think the 21st is good because we need that time in between the sessions, like the innovative school year and by training that uh, teachers have to do in the summer or their teaching summer school. So, Hold on. and it makes it hard for building services to, to be able to. Oh. Oh. All right. Good. So, my question is so, on scenario D, you're saying keep everything the way that it is, except start on August the 21st and end on June the 18th? Um, no, June the 14th at the latest. Oh, okay. I mean, it could, we, that could even move. Oh, so you're saying, um, so not quite scenario B, start at the same date as scenario B, but end at the same date. Starting a week. Um, yeah. Scenario B is start on 21st. Oh, right, I'm sorry, I was, yeah, okay. So what I was really proposing was at least the first day would be um, Wednesday the 23rd, right. is what I was proposing. I'd also like to see January, the professional development day on January 24th, move to the 22nd. So then it's supporting moving calendars B and D forward, mm -hmm. revising D to start on the 23rd, yes. end on the 14th, yes. and then making some adjustments or making an adjustment to a professional day. Yeah, well, moving this one particular professional development day and then um, asking um, staff to look at how the where how where the professional development days currently lie in this calendar proposal in terms of affecting paychecks and look at whether or not there are some areas where potentially we could cut some of them back um, or move them to a way that it doesn't um, have a negative impact on student um, consistency of learning. 
Socket, so, so keeping so them as close to weekends, for example, as possible. Um, so like the, the professional development day on September 13th, maybe moving that to the 9th, 11th instead, um, so that, so, you know, um, there's a little bit more consistency in the calendar that I know parents have yeah. okay. um, oh, given feedback. So I think what the, uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ms. Evans. I was going to say, so the um, the dates that you had mentioned earlier that Mr. Hollis had referenced that it would be easy for, or I don't want to put words in your mouth, but from the September 18th through the October 9th, those days that we could look at those days, how they're spaced or how we can use them. Right. Mr. Hollis, did you say that? I yeah, that's correct. Just okay. just really thinking about what's the number of days we need to, to have for professional development. Um, the, I think I know what's not movable is September the 4th, the holiday, and probably September 25th, that non-instructional day. I think it's there for a purpose, but I think things that are around it, uh, either preceding it or following it, um, are things that we can think about how we move differently. Okay. Okay. So then I'm okay with that. If you change, I'm good with that. So adjust D to 23rd, correct, and to end on the 14th. And look at the days, look at the days for the professional development. And I, I do want to throw in here um, too, as part for my colleagues. You know, part of why I was asking about if we could see a draft of an, a companion 24-25 calendar is is also greatly in part because that year's calendar is going to have a lot of other days, like holidays that fall during right. our school year that are currently in this calendar that we're discussing is on falling on weekends. Right. So um, I just want us to be able to have a, a bigger picture look um, than just this. And then it also goes to Mr. Kim's point at the last Correct. meeting, just had an opportunity to try to be more creative and work with, um, more targeted. Yeah, try to find things that we can work with. Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. Ms. Mandraski and Ms. Evans, I'm glad you bring up those points, especially about the 24-25 calendar, mm -hmm. because what we don't see in this calendar are many of the religious observances we, we usually have placed in our calendar to recognize. Correct. And so you will notice um, uh, a longer stretch of instructional days mm -hmm. that are throughout. So we will bring that forward um, uh, when we come to the board in December. The other part I do want to highlight that you will most likely receive in your memo and we can use as we discuss um, with the board as well is, you know, just in general, the number of pay dates as we complete, we put the professional days within the calendar. We do want to be mindful of how do we create seamless opportunities, but also how don't we disadvantage our, our, our workers who, um, whose salary may not be as high as others. So we want to be very, very mindful around those. But what I did here, just so um, we do like the week of August 21st, um, and we do have a consideration around thinking about a midweek start but also yes. recognizing possible impact in a couple of areas, one child care um, purposes. And um, I'm not sure, we've never done a midweek start as a district, um, but what that may look like attendance wise. We have had a year where we have gone from the last week of August starting and then bumped it up a week. Um, and people have, you know, conform to that, but in terms of what that may look like attendance wise. So we do hear the interest from the board. I mean, from the uh, managed policy. Management yeah. Committee. yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so colleagues, what are your, what are, are we good then? Um, and for just for clarification as far as, so are we okay to suggest that we move to the full board scenario B and scenario D with the revisions? And um, to Mr. Kim's point, I wanna reiterate that if that's what we vote on right now um, as a committee, that will still give families and um, students and staff an opportunity to participate in, in giving feedback up until December 6th. Yes. 
I mean, no, I'm, I'm just still, I'm yeah. clarifying now. I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. So. To provide feedback on the survey that we currently have out until December the 6th. Yes, or December, we'll say figure December 5th or 4th. I mean, what I would. I would like to recommend only because then that that presses us in terms of how we bring the data forward to the board. Um, that we we really look at uh, an end date for it um, because our board meeting is on December the sixth, and so we won't be able to have a very accurate picture for you in terms of who responded and and how many. So December second is a Friday. Would that be, could we, could we say we'll keep the survey open until December 2nd and then also try and be, um, you know, to Mr. Kim's point again, make, we can change the survey if we want, but make it very streamlined, very easy to access. As I had mentioned before, it should be a text message that goes out. That's hit this link, take two minutes of your time, answer four questions, click here, and it goes straight to the survey or, um, however you all want to do it, but I do uh, really respect and appreciate Mr. Kim's comments in terms of just making it as easy for people to participate as absolutely possible. I'm in agreement about the ease of participation, and we will look at how we do that. I would like to think about if we could close it around November the 29th, just in terms of preparation of information for the board meeting. Um, I don't That's know. Really like a week away, though? That's like a week away. It's um, Thanksgiving is my concern. It's the week of Thanksgiving is my, was my concern. Um, So, well, let me just ask you this in terms of compiling the feedback. Is there, uh, will have an impact other than sharing with us what people's feedback is? It, it will, um, just in terms of the preparation for it. I mean, Ms. Madrowski, uh, we can, what we can do is if we close it, if we take us at least to November the 30th um, and we report out at that point in time, it can stay open. But when we come, it will not be on the slide deck. We can just verbally share that information um, if that's going to help with the board. But we do use that just so everyone knows to really compile the recommendation that we bring forward. So that, that would be my, my only piece. Okay, um, Ms. Stewart, any 30th? So, so share, we, share we can go here. till the 30th. Mm -hmm. If we keep it open till the 30th, that'd be great. And then that gives you, um, you know, basically three extra days to compile um, the data, three working days um, to compile the data. Is that fair? Right. Yeah, I think we that's something that we, we can do to then help the board then Absolutely. meet. The, the regulations around sharing with the public um, and the allotted amount of time. Um, I, I just want to clarify the, the first part. I'm hearing, I heard B and D, but I, what, I, what I want to hear is this is a merger of B and D based on the comments that you've made, not two separate pieces, because we, we should have a single recommendation from the superintendent's office on December 6th. And I just want to clarify that. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure, do we, so I feel like there's two ways we can proceed. We can either, you can put something together as, as a combination that would be the superintendent's recommendation, or you could do, we could move forward the two separate scenarios, um, with the edits uh, or revisions, and then the superintendent could offer a recommendation of one of the one or the other of them based on the feedback that we have gotten and continue to get. This is sort of a, a question in terms of which do we feel that the superintendent would prefer, which is best for all of you. Um, I not to be selfish in, in the additional work part of it, but I will just say that I I feel like the companion scenario um, draft of 24-25 calendar, uh -huh. um, that, that part of it, I think, makes it more tangible to come up with 
one solid recommendation okay. that definitely um, takes into account the considerations that you have for okay. B and D, but still meet what we're starting to see in feedback. Okay, Ms. Edwards, did you have something you were going to add? Yeah, I would just agree that, to try to bring forward one if we could merge B and D. They have similar elements. They do. Um, they have very, very similar elements. And if I listen to this committee, some key pieces I heard was the week of the 21st. Yes. Looking at um, ending around June 14th, that consideration there. Um, mm -hmm being able to have some flexibility with the January 24th professional development marking day, which we can, because if we start a little bit earlier, then that day will shift back. The other part that really has to be teased out and um, just, just walk with me on this little street for a second is if we start on the 23rd or if we start on the 21st and what I'm hearing in terms of the interest of this committee is we want that week. However, please keep in mind how many uh, days a 10 month person will get in their paycheck throughout the year. And that can support us in our drivers in terms of the placement of some of the days. We want to keep the PD days in. We want to see how they're attached for, you know, just nice flow. And again, going back to who would we impact the most? And we know it would be our 10 month employees, our families who need spaces for their kids to go to, which we have out of school time that will support much of that. So I, we'd like an opportunity um, if so, you know, if it pleases the committee to bring forward a condensed model, bearing in mind, you know, one model, all of the things that that you've shared, and then we can line those up for you. So I'm fine with that. I'm comfortable okay. with that. Wonderful. Thank you for, for um, being open to that. But you provided Absolutely. us great details here. Okay. No, I really appreciate your willingness to take in all of this and um, continue to work on it. Again, I'm very appreciative of the big picture draft um, year ahead calendar as well. I think one of the things that we often hear from our community um, is being able to participate and be and have a, a better sense of what's coming up so that it's not a surprise, we're gonna do this or you know, whatever it might be. So um, and that's not to say that it would be a set thing, it would just be a framework for what it could look like going forward, if that's something that we, you know, like. So I am good with all of that as long as um. So I will, I'm going to make a motion then that we move um, the recommendation of staff um, and I'm just going to say all in favor of that. Sure. Yep. Yep. Mr. Kim? Okay. Dr. Daka? No. Okay. Okay. So uh, three eyes, one nay. And um, so that will be the way we are going to proceed. Okay, and then I guess um, we don't really have any other business, so um, that will conclude our meeting for today, and um, we will revisit this um, at the full board meeting on December 6th, and I want to say thank you again to all of you for being here, for your time, for taking the extra meeting so that um, we had time to work on this a little bit more thoroughly. Thank you. Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, right? I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Be safe. Thanks, Thank you, too. Bye. Bye.